I may be sick, but dadgummit, I'm gonna do my first and probably only attempt at a vlog, and this may not even see the light of day, because it's all dependent on if I like the book, and that book is Severed Echoes by Anya Dillon. So I am going to read uh, Amanda's book, Anya Dillon, Shelf Unstable, and I will be checking in maybe periodically. I don't know how vlogs work. Uh, I don't really even watch them, except for Jimmy's, to be honest. Um, but yes, so I really hope to God that I, I love this book. Um, I hope that I even like this book. Again, we'll see if this vlog sees the light of day. I will check in when I check in. Okay, so I am five chapters into this and I realized I didn't even say what it was about. I also don't really, didn't really know what it was about myself when I started. Um, and I still kind of don't know what it's about. I could read the back. There's apparently something about uh, porter, portal to hell beneath the steam of a hotel hot tub. So maybe hot tub time machine reference. I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyways, but five chapters into this, about 50 pages. And I'm really, I'm enjoying myself. Um, her writing, um, Anya Dillon, feels, feels weird saying Anya Dillon, but I will respect the author, author name. Um, her writing is really compelling. Um, I cannot put it down. And I really, really like the dual perspective. So, so far you have two perspectives. I'm assuming that it's just these two perspectives for the entirety of the book. Um, you have Soren, who is the first perspective that you're introduced to, and that is third person, uh, written in third person. And he is a maybe mafia person, definitely a, a, a mysterious figure who, when you're introduced to him, he's putting a body, unconscious body, into a trunk. And the second perspective is Meg, and it's written in first person, point of view. And she, they, they, in, they, what's the word? Their paths cross, there you go. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Their paths cross, um, and Soren winds up taking her captive, like kidnapping her, and taking both her and the person that is in the trunk of his car that he originally kidnapped to a hotel and something might happen some sort of ritual and yeah i need to read more um her writing style like i said is very consumable um and I never thought that I would like and be into kind of thriller-esque type stories, but here we are. So, so far so good. I'm hoping it stays this way. All right, it is a little after eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. Needless to say, I just woke up. Uh, I, yeah. But I did want to update real, really quickly because I read a lot more last night um, after my update. I stayed up way past my bedtime to read and I finished the first part. Um, so I'm like 125, 130 pages in. And to reiterate and expand upon I think what I said before about the two perspectives, um, Soren and Meg. I think what Anya Dillon is doing really, really well with these two perspectives is it balances, not only balances each other um, from a character perspective, but from a narrative perspective. 
um, it balances the tension um, where she's drip feeding the world and the lore and the backstory of both of these characters um, in a really natural um, and intriguing way without being info dumpy or um, yeah it's just, without being info dumpy and I think if it was one perspective um, of either of them I think there would be some frustration because of the lack of context um, so I'm really really liking how um, how just it was it's structured and the perspectives um, this is turning into like quasi horror sci-fi I I don't know how to describe it um, but there is a, a portal to hell indeed that's underneath the hot tub at least you go under the water and you go to this other world um, and uh, it's really, really compelling, really interesting. Um, there's a like a devil-like character named uh, Fa Val Valgor, Valgor, um, yeah, Valgor, and I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and he's really interesting. Um, I'm, I just really, I don't know how to do these things, but I'm just really liking it, and I cannot tell you how relieved I am with how much I'm enjoying this um, and I'm surprised with honestly how much I'm enjoying it as well it's just very consuming and compelling and I am I wouldn't be surprised if I finished it today thing that I did want to um, kind of really quickly uh, touch on is if anyone knows me I am very much a thematic reader I like having dialogue with the text that I'm reading and this this is giving me that um, it's not preachy in any way there are already passages that I've marked that I are, are really rich um, not only in um, not only in how they're written uh, and how it how it's told but also um, the the depth and and the meaning of them. So I'm just gonna read off a couple of passages that I really, really, um, that I really, really enjoyed and really touched me um, and uh, engaged me. Um, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, before I read this, so a theme that's really um, being explored so far is what is good and what is evil, and who who is good and who is evil so they're um soren in this in this perspective um soren is kind of asking himself um but it's not like he's not thinking this but um anyways the passages um do we perpetuate the cycle of evil when we punish evil is the slightest imbalance of judgment enough to condemn us forever? Figures that won't reconcile due to an accounting error of ethics made thousands of years before we were born. And I, I thought that was um, incredibly, um, incredibly thoughtful. Um, and then related to that, um, Meg on, on her side is, is considering similar things without it's consistent in the theming, but also it still feels, it's, it feels like they're not, they're not the same, obviously they're, they're not the same character, but they're not, I don't know, it's, it's not, I don't know, it feels dynamic and natural, um, but she says, measuring blame and measuring guilt this way made my head spin. It was logical, but, uh, but abstract. It both absolved and damned for every action. I thought that was um, really cool. Um, a scene that I really, 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 really liked is the scene where, and I guess, I don't know, this is, I guess this is a spoiler vlog, but um, where Meg and Valgor 
go into the hot tub for the first time. Maybe the only time, I don't know, at least the initial time. And just the way that's described, that entire scene and that entire scene itself is really, really cool. Really almost psychedelic. And I think that's the point because uh, you're going to a whole another dimension world thing and you're not supposed to really, it's not our world. So it's like, what is this place? And especially coming from Meg's perspective, she doesn't know what's going on. And it was just really compelling um, where you also, where you don't know what's going on, but you're also so intrigued and fascinated by by what's going on as well. So yes, anyways, suffice to say, I'm really, really, really enjoying this book. Uh, I'm so grateful and thankful and relieved that I'm enjoying this book. Um, and I will check in later. So I finished part two of Separate Echoes and I'm continuing to really, really enjoy this. It's taken a turn, um, not a drastic turn, um, but I'm really, really intrigued by this. It's a, there's a lot of um, internal, con li literal internal conflict with Meg. Um, and you understand why the book is called Severed Echoes. And yeah, I mean, I guess I already said that this was going to be a spoiler, spoiler vlog. So um, yeah, so this kind of deeper quasi-psychological um, depiction and exploration of these literal two sides of Meg's brain. Um, she had surgery to help her with seizures, um, where they split her brain, the hemispheres of, of her brain. And so she literally has like two people inside, in, in, in her brain, two, um, two consciousnesses. And yeah, and one, one of them gets loose in control of her body whenever she goes to necro necrosia. There you go. Um, every time she takes a journey to the other plane with Val Valgor, um, the, the, the kind of, to, to put it very generically, um, and very kind of broadly, the, the personality shift of, um, whoever takes over, uh, whatever side of her brain takes over, um, it flips, uh, there's a, um, leapfrog effect there in a way. Um, and then the interesting aspect is that if, only if the other Meg, so left brain Meg, um, sees herself in the mirror, right brained, like, normal Meg, um, gets control back over, and the left brained Meg knows what's happening to right brained Meg, but right brained Meg doesn't know, like, it's like she has memory loss, she doesn't know what occurred excuse me, what occurred, what happened, what she said, or what she said, or what was said, um, while left brain Meg had control. So it's really, really interesting. Um, I am continuing to very much enjoy this. Um, I'm still sick, but whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah, so I have like 60 odd pages left, I think. Um, I don't know how to do math. 50. 50 pages left. Maybe even less than that. I don't know. Again, I don't know how to do math. Um, so yeah. <coughs> so yeah, I'm hoping to finish it tonight because it is seven o'clock, um, on a Saturday night. So I'm hoping I'll be able to finish it. Um, I did send a message to, to been on Discord, um, Amanda's fiancé, aka Anya Dillon, uh, Anya Dillon's fiancé, and I was like, listen, don't tell her, because unless something drastically changes in these last, you know, hundred or so pages, like, I don't want her to know, but I'm really fucking loving this, like, it's really, really fucking good, um, and I still stand by that with 50 some odd pages left. 
So hopefully it continues and uh, we shall see. Okay, I had to do an update before I finish this book. I, I have like 20 pages left, but I just finished chapter 27. And what the fuck? Holy shit. Oh god, my eyes hurt. Um, And then the very, like, the last couple of lines was a holy shit. Like, it was a holy shit moment for, for that scene happening. My eyes still hurt. And then the last few lines were another, another holy shit moment on top of that holy shit scene. Holy shit. Okay, so I finished and I am very intrigued how the second book is going to go. Um, yeah, the so the latter half of Severed Echoes, it's almost almost psychedelic in a weird way with horror in it um Meg and her other side of her personality her other brain her other identity um it was a little kind of difficult to kind of see which side was doing what and there was a lot of confusion there which arguably is definitely intended considering it was supposed to be like who is controlling what um and if i'm being nitpicky um a couple of little things were a little um a little sudden um references of meg to her lover which i assume was was belgor um it's implied that she has like this this well it's more than implied that she has this connection to him but uh to call him her lover was very I was a little taken aback by that but regardless all of the latter half despite my you know confusion which I'm easily confused about everything um I really really enjoyed it um it really ramped up a lot with bringing in the wider cast of characters it felt less uh like a not a locked room but like a very isolated gothic thing uh, kidnapping story and more it brought in the the wider cast of characters with Ventane uh, people and yeah I I don't know what else to say like I, I really liked it um and I'm not just saying that because the author and myself are friends or at the very least if she doesn't consider me a friend we're at least friendly so um hopefully Hopefully you think I'm a friend as well. So, anywho, I really enjoyed it. Um, I would say four, four, four out of five stars um, with some really great, incredible scenes that were, um, that were just took me, made me pause in a good way. Um, and I'm very, very, very much looking forward to reading the second book whenever she releases it. And, um, yeah, so I wound up putting tabs in where I noted stuff, uh, either nice passages or things that were just um, thematically engaging. So considering this is her first at least published book, uh, I am very, very, very much looking forward to not only the second book in the series, but also just following um, her writing as she writes more because I really like her writing style again that was so compelling so consuming uh, the writing and the story itself that i finished it in a little over 24 hours essentially i started it yesterday evening at about probably five six o'clock and it is currently now almost 9 p.m um on set on a saturday i started it on friday evening finished it Saturday night so yeah uh it is very consuming this is a book that I don't think is really definable when it comes to putting it in a like a genre box there's fantasy there's thriller there's horror elements in there there's suspense um 
there's even like psychedelic stuff going on um maybe sci-fi i weird weird fiction is that the word weird fiction maybe yeah maybe if i if i had to put a phrase on it, it would be this is more than anything weird fiction but there's like a dark fantasy aspect to it as well i don't know whatever you y'all should read it um i loved it i think it's great thank you so much amanda anya dylan shelf unstable this is wonderful I need the second book now. Thank you.